Okay, I use a standard RC Powers motor mount that you can cut out from the plan view PDF and a circle of ply that I cut out using a hole saw and a drill. I don't use anything specially technical, I just cut it out with a cheap uh, coping saw which I bought from the hardware store on sale for about four bucks. Now I just cut in with the coping saw and then I knock the pieces out with a flathead screwdriver. If you want a nice clean cut you can go out and buy yourself a 6mm wide chisel but um, of course that's another tool and another expense. Whatever the hammer doesn't take out clean, you just trim up with your knife. Now it's a bit of messing around but the first thing I do is I go around and I put the screw in each place where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's just the same as making yourself a pilot hole. If you really want to you can do it with the tip of one of your knives. Now I've pulled this motor out of another plane and I haven't unplugged it all. Uh, of course this is a lot easier to do if you don't have your prop on yet and you don't have your speed controller hooked up to it and whatnot, but it's all basically the same thing. Um, I do mount the motor first for a reason and I'll show you why in just a minute. Whatever you do, don't put your screws all the way through, pick it up to finish it off because your wife or your mother is not going to thank you for screwing your motor down to the kitchen table. <laughs> screws don't have to be tight, they just have to be snug. If you tighten them up too much, the screws are just going to pull their way through the plywood and it's not going to hold your motor down. If you've done like I have and used blanks, make sure you cover up that hole in the back because you're about to use glue around it and the last thing you want to be doing is gluing the back end of your motor. Okay, I use epoxy for this job and it's one of the few areas where I use too much. You want the extra in there so it forms gap filler for everywhere where your cuts aren't quite straight. Okay, now for why I put up with the difficulty of having the motor and the prop and the prop adapter and everything already attached. When you get your motor in, it gives you lots of frames of reference so you can see whether your motor mount's in there straight or not. You can line up the end of the prop adapter with the back of your prop slot. You can line up the uh, prop in the slot lengthwise doesn't take much for it to be crooked and then you're in trouble you got to start pushing washers under the screws and all that sort of thing because you've got too much epoxy in there you can move it around a little bit and it's going to form a nice gap filler and you end up with a nice straight motor 